secret trick to the beaver bag system is the very first layer. The very first layer is only half full. But this gives um, go right here. this what I call the sort of the saddlebag across the horse's butt effect. <laughs> right here, we're going to have. Right here. If, you, if you look at this uh, wall as being four chambers wide, uh, right here we have zero. The value of this thickness, zero, one half, zero, one half. Now we put another layer on. It's going to be full bag, full bags. It's going to be one, one half, one, one half, and so on. If we put more on here, it's going to be one and a half, one, one and a half, one, and it just keeps going back and forth. And so you also, you also got a differential between the chamber and the web of one half thickness of a bag. Now over here, what we have is I call the anti-erosion part. I'm going to put just the total four chambers wide on either side, both this side and then eventually on this side, of the dam. The main dam is going to be four chambers wide, right up the middle here. But we're going to have just one layer of four chambers on either side to prevent erosion of the uh, uh, dirt bank or uh, road or uh, levee, whatever you've got. Now I know you're uh, you got the water rising. And you're anxious to get as much sand out there as possible, but you got to discipline yourself again to only do uh, half full bags to lay your proper you know, road bed or base. Well, here's the first beaver bag dam, or whatever we're going to call it, and for the most part it's successful, but essentially here this doggone thing is working. You got a dam there, it's almost, uh, doesn't look it, but it's like four feet deep. There, uh, this is three, three and a half, anyway. And the wall itself uh, shows no sign of, uh, you know, bulging out or anything. And here's about the worst, worst you got right here. It's a little annoying dribble. And that isn't going to kill anybody. But you see, even as we stack these kind of sloppy here, the whole thing is pretty much holding together. Uh, some of these bags under high pressure here want to get pushed out, but they're not doing it because uh, the other bags are holding them. I'm Richard Davis, the inventor of beaver bags. Here we've been doing an experiment. These bags have been laying here for about so long, I can't remember, about two and a half or three years. We've had them laying here, exposed to the snow, the rain, sun, and the ballistic nylon beaver bags uh, appear to be holding up pretty good. You see the weeds growing up through and around them, everything, so definitely been here a long time. The Velcro's holding up everything, and uh, now we're going to pick them up and see if the structural integrity of the nylon is still there. And two, healthy, handsome, my old father's roommate here, Barry. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> Oh, can you turn, can you turn off now, Steve? Yeah, boy, this has been really... You need to round the end of these a little bit. So that's slide yeah. Yeah, I'll probably sand them off a little bit. Anyway, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Got some worms under here. <laughs> like it, Richard. Okay. Okay, a couple of 64-year-old guys. <laughs> yeah. A couple of wild and crazy guys. Okay. okay. Here we are. Good shot of the ground there, Cindy. Jeez. <laughs> so these things have been uh, sitting there uh, for, for the 200 pounds of sand and uh, for about two and a half, three years. And they're still in good shape. I mean, they don't look too great, but uh, they're uh, able to pull it out a little bit. Yeah. Drop one down. Yeah, roll it over here. Yeah, even even the part that's been on the uh, on the ground here. That shows the, the double tube construction. Yep. And even the part that's been on the ground here uh, is, is still holding up. Well, I got roots are growing. So I got. Got a whole eco ecosystem right here. Yeah, that one. So it's all intact. So, uh, maybe I can take, take this and put it on your, uh, you know, damn, you want, you want to go to this. Let's cross it. Let's cross it. Cool. Up, up, up. Away we go. <laughs> Let's race. So, I guess you got the idea. Let's put it back on top of one of these here, I guess. Okay. 
Let's have the dirty side up. <laughs> you good? Okay. You can do it all day long. You don't want to have. They're heavy, but not bad. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Four people, of course, you can how, go like crazy. How much do those weigh, Richard? Probably 180 to 200 pounds, depending on how much sand and yeah. water you got in there. How wet it is. Yeah. yeah. And so it's probably those are probably close to 200 right now, though. Now you can see what we've got here. You've got what I call the saddlebag across the horse's butt effect. So there's always a uh, difference between the middle and the ends, the inside and the outside, rather. So the bags, by gravity, will tend to grip each other. This starts going pretty fast now. That is, uh, without any side, we didn't, we didn't put any uh, side bracing on there. Yay! So that's pretty darn high. It's higher than any normal uh, soldier is going to be, uh, height-wise. And without any side reinforcing or anything. There's no, and it's, also, it's built on a slope here, too. So let's see if it stops anything. Here's a Browning 50 caliber armor-piercing incendiary tracer round. Fired from my uh, converted 1918 Mauser with a suppressor, so I don't need to use your earmuffs. And it's a good day to do it because it's been drizzling out. The ground's all wet. We can't start a forest fire if we tried. Let's see. Make this up. We've got a witness plate behind the uh, uh, machine gun slit there. Let's see what we do. You see that trace? We've got a piece of uh, white uh, particle board, actually just a used sign from the hardware store for a witness plate. And you can see where the uh, 50 caliber armor piercing incendiary hit. And uh, you know, I'm kind of nervous now. Let's take a look around the side. I'm pretty sure this will stop 30 calibers, but uh, about 50s. And glory be, it's nothing there. It's not the bug. <laughs> uh, it did not penetrate through. Well, 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 well. That's very interesting. So it's 50 caliber armor piercing incendiary tracer. Uh, just like one of these. This is a uh, Frankfurt Arsenal 1952. <laughs> Korean War vintage. Uh, I've had these through the chronograph. They're the, you know about 2750 feet per second. And uh, I also have shot these through uh, one and a half inches of uh, mild steel. So uh, this is the real thing. By the way, the weather here looks like the end of the world is coming. So this is a few days later after the first test, and uh, we've got a nice wet uh, grounds here, so we're going to give it a try with that, and then we're going to try what about concentrated 50 caliber armor-piercing incendiary tracer ammo. Uh, we're going to fire a few shots at a time and then uh, take a look and see what happens. Just got blown over by the wind, the oncoming storm, and looking good. Come on, baby. Yahoo! There is no penetration. Boy. Sorry about the camera work here. We're, this is the back side. So there's your 50 caliber down there, and uh, nothing came through. And again, here's your simple pieces of uh, plywood painted white for witness plates and uh, looking good that's a piece of dirt right there <laughs> yeah piece of dirt well we've already got uh, by my calculations 14 rounds of 50 caliber armor piercing incinerate tracer into one row of beaver bags there and we're going to try a few more. Eventually anything can be penetrated uh, if you just keep pounding on it. And I guess the question begs, uh, how many times can this thing be hit? And I've got about, uh, 
I guess about 50 or 60 rounds, maybe 70 rounds of uh, armor piercing incinerate tracer left for, for my Browning M2. And we'll give it a few shots here. Well, you can see the parts where I missed at the very edge. Well, this is uh, taking chunks out of the edge of it. And one grazing round back here on our half completed uh, uh, bunker here. But here's the good news. Look at that. Nothing but uh, virgin plywood, if there's such a thing. Our uh, official hardware store witness plates. Uh, Nothing happening. Uh, no penetration. Uh, that's about 50 meters out. Uh, 50 caliber armor piercing incendiary tracer. And I'm pretty happy about that. And you should be too. Well, as the uh, man in the original Dirty Harry movie said, hey man, I got to know. I'm going to try to fire, uh, i got about 20 or 30 maybe rounds left of the 50 caliber armor piercing incendiary tracer. And I'm going to try to concentrate these all on one small spot and see if we can uh, chew our way through. That's the next obvious question. And again, you ought to do your own tests. Uh, this could be faked, of course. And, and this is, by the way, it's just ordinary, normal wet sand. Uh, it's sort of dry when we get in there, a little bit damp. It's not anything special. Uh, wood chips wouldn't work as well. Uh, gravel would work better. spot. Well, there's, you know, oh boy. Again, nothing can hold up to continuous fire forever. It's just uh, probably about 30 rounds of 50, 50 caliber armor piercing incinerate tracer in there, and uh, uh, I don't, don't want people to think we're totally invulnerable. On the other hand, holy, 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 unholy. <laughs> this is uh, really, frankly, quite surprising. I am quite surprised here. This is the, uh, I know official U.S. government witness plate is uh, 20 thousands aluminum. This is just simple half-inch plywood. I'll be darned. The plywood is whole, and there is there is no holes. I'll be darned. I am I am really really shocked. This is uh, well, you saw it. It's quite fantastic. Again, let's take a look at the front side here. That is uh. Quite amazing. I, I want to stick my hand in and try to find some of the APIT rounds, but uh, I'm afraid it's going to be kind of hot. But then again, why not? Oh, oh, okay, ow. I start feeling heat as I go in there. <laughs> uh, wait, wait a while for that to cool down. There's got to be some hot rounds in there. This is quite amazing. This, this uh, held up to this kind of abuse. So, uh, uh, Again, it's called beaver bags. Each beaver bag has uh, three holes in it. That's not an accident of production. That's how we hook these up to the filling station. Now the filling stations come in uh, two foot eight inch sections. Right now we've got two of these bolted together. You can put any number of these things end to end to end. And with one more here, we'd have an eight foot wide uh, filling station. We've got this one open up here deliberately so I can see in here as we dump the dirt in. But you have an eight foot wide, which is wider than any uh, front end loader I know of. And the uh, filling station is shipped in fit kit form, and we got a part here so, so we can show you how to uh, maybe give you a better, little better idea. This will give you a little better idea of how the uh, bags go over here. Again, one beaver bag, two separate sand chambers. So 
get the idea. The sand drops through there and fills the bag up. We close the industrial Velcro on the bag and the other one will be over here like this one, all the way around. So each uh, single portable filling station will fill four bags at once. I put two together, you're only going to get six bags because the ones in the middle uh, you can't really fill. You just basically just let, let them fill up and just leave them there. Those will be your last bags. But each time you add a filling station to the row here, you're getting two more uh, bags of, to fill. When it comes to emergency situation, uh, you can use your, uh, frankly, weaker people. Uh, older women uh, can be in charge of just putting these bags up. Kind of takes a big, strong guy like me <laughs> a little while longer to get these on here, but that's a job that women and uh, young girls can do very easily. And hang, hang that on, and the guys will be in charge of lifting the bags full of sand and carrying them away and building the dam. Got this plate taken away to show you, but the uh, dirt will come falling in here and just go fall through all the holes. Now this, the two center bags, we're just leaving them, leave them, won't bother using them until the very end, I guess. Those, those will be the last two bags you use. The, the dirt will just fall right through here, gravity's working for you. And uh, you pull the bags down and take them away. There. We have a high-tech tool here. Uh, you don't want to use uh, your hands. Now we're going to fill up that one bag that we just uh, took off. So industrial vel Velcro, and once you get this closed, you, you need like two men and a crowbar to get it open again. There it is. That's going to be there for quite a long time. It just does not want to come open. This is not your regular Velcro. Two rather beefy guys can handle this easy enough, or more realistically, in the long run, four uh, ordinary sized guys. Sure. <laughs> and or, or uh, eight uh, Girl Scouts really can handle it. And let's pick this up. And off we go. Let's race. <laughs> now these can be placed on pallets and ahead of time and make yourself ready for, of course, when you're done, pull them out. Once you're, once you're in place in the dam or in place in a pallet, pull it out and away you go. If you have any foresight, We'll stack the bags up like this on pallets. They don't need to be protected from the sunlight or the rain or anything. Uh, if they get water in them, great. It means a little more uh, heavy and uh, more substantial. So we're giving you a guarantee of five years on the life of the uh, listed nylon, and frankly, it'll probably last about 20 or 30. So we've got some here that are uh, been sitting out here for at least a year. And you hardly tell that they've been used at all. We've got some others here in the bottom that are uh, actually now going on six years old, and they're just fine. A little dirty. Got some dirt growing around, uh, dirt on them, and weeds growing out of them, and everything. But they're just fine, blissfully sound.